We're still in our series called Love Gone Wild. Love Gone Wild. Last week, we talked about the love of God. This week, I want to talk about the love for God. Amen? Amen. Next week, I'm talking about the love for that special one. Week after that, we're talking about the love for the other ones. And then the last week in February, we're going to talk about the love for number one. All right? All right. Love gone wild. Let's go to Mark 12 and 30. I'm going to read it from the King James, and then, of course, I got to read it from the Amplify because it just amplifies it. But the King James, if you have it, say amen. King James says, we only read it one verse. It says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Start right there. I want to go to Amplify because the Amplify does a little bit better for us. I love the King James. I'll never leave the King James, I don't think. But the Amplify, it says, And you shall, you shall love the Lord your God out of and with your whole heart. Out of and with your soul, your life. Out of and with your mind, with your faculties of thought and your moral understanding. Out of and with all your strength. This is the first and principal commandment. Amen. When we look at this scripture, if I can give you the history real quick. They came to Jesus, and they were asking him questions, and they asked him, well, what, what is the greatest commandment, Jesus? Because they were trying to trick him up. And Jesus said, well, you know, the greatest, and he quoted from Deuteronomy. You'll find this same passage of scripture in Deuteronomy. He quoted this scripture for Deuteronomy. But then when you read all four gospels, one of the gospels says, and I also give you a second commandment. We're not going to deal with the second commandment today, but we're all going to later on this week. The second commandment was love your neighbor as yourself. That was the second commandment. But I want to deal with this morning, this first commandment that started in the Old Testament and then traveled to the New Testament. Didn't stop there. He said, love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. One translation, one of the gospels starts with the mind, but Mark says, with all thy strength. Deuteronomy says the same thing. So when I look at the text, the first thing that stands out to me is that God wants me to love him intentionally. God wants me to love him intentionally so what you mean pastor intentionally when you define it means it's done on purpose or deliberately uh some other words that mean the same thing means premeditated calculated planned willful meant and studied so that's my first point really this first a i got a 1B too, but 1A says I want to love him intentionally because if I'm going to love him with all of that, that means I got to do it on purpose. That means I have to. It's not just something that happens. Nobody wants somebody to love them just on the fly. I, I just saw you and I, I, since I saw you, I want to say I love you. I, I, you know, I just... Want to wave. You, want, you want somebody that when they walk in the store and they see something, they think about you. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you see a movie that, 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 that just displays how you want a relationship to happen, you think about that, that special one. It's intentional. And so God said, I want you to think about me. Y'all ever thought about that? God wants you to think about him. We always want God to think about us. I'm going to talk to this side because that side ain't giving me no help. We always want God to think about us. But this scripture tells me God wants me to think about him. And if he wants me to think about him, he said, love me. Now, now love doesn't always mean to get. Can I teach? It means to give. So if God wants me to think about him and he wants me to love him, that means he don't want me to always ask him for something. 
Some of y'all catch that on Wednesday. He, he don't want, so I'm always saying, God, can I have, God, can I have? Well, is that showing him love? Got some parents in the house. If all the time your kids are just asking for something, but don't always say thank you for something. Do you love me? <laughs> oh, God. Can I, can I use my daughter for example? Trinity is very affectionate. God wants you like Trinity. I walk in the house. She said, hey, Daddy, give me a hug. And she come and help me. Then I've been there for five minutes, and she'll come back and say, hey, Daddy, and give me another hug. And I'll be there for another 30 minutes, and she'll come back and help me again. Oh, God, y'all ain't going to. So that's how God wants you. He wants you to be intentional. You thought about him in the morning, but you said, you know something, God, you've been so good. Let me think about you at the noonday. And, and, and I was just on my break, and I thought I would think about you. And I'm right before I lay down, Lord, I just want to think about it. Because that brings me to point, B, point 1B, because loving God is 24-7. It's intentional, and it's 24-7. So what do you mean, Pastor? When I wake up in the morning, he wants me to say, I love you, Lord. If I wake up in the middle of the night before I put my feet down, I should say, Lord, you know I love you. Before I lay down, I should tell him I love you. While I'm riding down the street and the traffic is all messed up and somebody just cut me off, before I cuss them out, I should say, Lord, I, I, I love you. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Because it's intentional. It's 24-7. Yes. It has to be intentional because he told me with all my heart. It got to be intentional because he told me with all my soul. It got to be intentional because he told me with all my mind. And then he told me with all my strength. It's intentional. It's 24-7. If I'm really in a love affair, everything is about the person I love. Mm, Jesus. Everything is about the one I love. So if I'm really in love with God, then everything is about him. Everything is about him. It's intentional. It's 24-7. When you love somebody, you, you, when people look at you, they kind of figure out where the other one at. <laughs> See, y'all ain't going to help me here. I'm too deep for some of y'all today. <laughs> Lord, how much? When, when you really, when, when you really, when it's really somebody, well, I, let me put it this way. Let me give them. When they see me and I'm supposed to be with First Lady, the first thing they say is, we're First Lady. They may not say, hello, Pastor. They may say, we're First Lady. Because it's supposed to be a love affair. So when you see me, you see her. When you see her, you see me. So when she show up, they be like, well, we're pastor. Because y'all always together. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all always together. And if you always together with God, everywhere you go, God should go. If you're in love with him. So that means I can't go to work and leave him at home. Oh. Oh God, that, that, that means I can't, I can't, oh, I ain't trying to mess up, I saw something, and I got nothing, none, I didn't see any of y'all, I'm, I'm giving up, I'm giving a warning now, it won't none of y'all, but I saw something on Facebook, and I'm like trying to figure out, you mean you don't love God on your birthday? Oh God, I don't, you don't, because cause you want to do what you want to do on your birthday, but you want to love God any other day? So you don't love God on your birthday, it was none of y'all, it was none of y'all, you don't love him on your birthday? Oh God, I, I, I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm, I got to get out of here, Mr. Hoffman, I got to get out of here because it's, it's too, it's, I'm cutting too deep in here because somebody bleeding, you need to put a tourniquet on. You, you can't love God all the time, it's 24-7. And sometimes when I get up, I remember, Lord, did I, did I tell you I love you today? Did, did I, I speak to you today? Did, did, I, did I, did we have fellowship today? <laughs> I gotta remind because it's 24 7. It's intentional. So if it's 24 7 and it's intentional, then point number two means I gotta be fully committed and fully engaged. I'm fully committed to loving God because He told me to love Him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. So I'm fully committed. I'm fully engaged. So that means. God don't want no part-time lover. You know, a part-time lover, a part-time lover is a lover just on convenience. I wouldn't use another word, but we got kids in here. A part-time lover, a part-time lover is just there on convenience. 
when it's okay for me to love you, I love you. When it's convenient for me, even if it's not convenient for you, I love you. You show up and you don't know, well, I was just in the neighborhood I'm showing up. Well, you ain't showed up for the last two weeks, but you want to show up now? Because I don't want no part-time lover. And I, I, I don't understand how we only show up for God part-time. And I ain't talking about church. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about fellowship. We only show up. He's waiting for us to talk to him in morning prayer, but we ain't there. Because a part-time lover is by convenience. And so God said, no, 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 I don't need no part-time lover. You got to be fully committed. You got to be fully engaged. So when you're fully committed in a relationship and you're fully engaged in a relationship, that means you don't got no secret lovers. Oh, God, I would pull the Atlantic star, but I'm trying to stay like church in here. But, you know, yeah, God, yeah, yeah, how you love God and nobody know it. I'm going to talk over here, man. I'm going, I'm going back on your side. How you love God and nobody know it. How you living for God and nobody know it. Nobody know you love God. Nobody knows. He, he don't need no secret lover. He said, if you don't love me, you got to be fully engaged. Fully committed. You can't be ashamed of trying to hide it. I like Beyonce. She said, if you like it, you should put a ring on it. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> y'all see y'all love God, but I don't see no commitment. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I don't see no commitment because God said, if you, if you love me, you got to be fully engaged, fully committed, because God may show up any time. <laughs> He may show up in the time. His spirit may drop in your car. His spirit may meet you before you hit the door. They hit the, go to work. So God said, when you love me, you got to be fully committed. You got to be fully engaged because this thing we got is, is, is a commitment. It's a commitment. And I'm fully into it. Nobody wants to be with somebody who ain't fully into it. And for all of you who are, you need to get out of it. Oh, God, I ain't, ain't going to mess with you. Because you, you, you're supposed to be with me, but we're not fully, you're not fully into me. Then you'll need to be with me. Oh, you ain't going to help me here. I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I think I'm preaching better than getting amens here, but I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I don't know why I picked Super Bowl Sunday to do this, but I got some wings back there, and I got some stuff back there, so y'all can be happy afterwards. But right now, you, you know, God don't. You, you got to be fully into me. You got to be fully committed. Fully engaged into me. You want to be with me only sometimes. You want to spend some time time with me. But you don't want to spend all the time time with me. That means you don't want to be with me. Because God, when you love God, you got you to gotta love him with all your heart. You gotta love him with all your soul. You gotta love him with all your mind. You gotta love him with all your strength. So he don't want no part-time lover. He don't want no secret lover. Then it, it, it gets me to point number three because God hit me with this and I, I I hope I can get this out the way he hit me with it. But 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 God said, when God said, when you look at the text, let's look at the text. Can we look at the text? When I look at the text, it says to love him with all my heart with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my strength. It sounds like to me, and y'all probably better Bible scholars than I am, but it sounds like to me he want all of me. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like he wants all of me. But, but God, you really want me all of me? And this is the thing, this is the thing, since Christy, this is the thing that tripped me out. This thing tripped me out. If he want all of me, that means he wants the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, you mean, God, you want me to love you with my good, and you want me to love you with my bad, and you want me to love you with my ugly? You want the good, the bad, and the ugly of me? I got to think, well, Lord, why? Because you, have you ever seen somebody who's in love? They get the change in on you. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can y'all help me? Think why she help me here. They get to change it on you when, when they're in love. They, they used to hang with you, but when they're in love, they don't hang with you no more. They, they you used to be able to find them, but when you love, you can't find them. And God got to, got to deal with me. He said, I want, I want the bad, the good, and the ugly because when you start loving me, I'm going to change some things. <laughs> your mind is messed up, but if you start loving me with all your mind, I'll change your mind. Your, your soul is messed up, and your heart is messed up, but if you love me with all your heart and all your soul, I'll change your heart. I'll change your mind. You only got a little bit of strength. But if you love me with a little bit of strength, I'll renew your strength as an eagle. God said, give me your bad. Give me your ugly. Give me your good. Love me with all of it. Love me with all of it because that really tripped me out. I said, God, you want me to love you all of it? God said, yeah, because I'm the only one that can transform all of it into something good. <laughs> I, can, I know your mind jacked up, but love me with it. See what happens. <laughs> I, I know your heart is hurt and broken, and you still tripping over stuff that happened a long time ago, but love me with all your heart and I'll heal it. I know you, you don't got all the strength that you need, but love me with all the strength that you got and watch me renew your strength. Give me your good. Give me your bad. Hey, give me your ugly. We get married and sometimes don't know the ugly. Oh God, let me get let me that white pie. We get, we get. But do you say I do? So you can't. So now you got to deal with the ugly, and you got to deal with the bad. And God said, I know you're ugly. Yeah, I felt the same way when he, when he told me I got silent. I know you're ugly. God said, I know you're bad, and I still want it. I still want it. I still want you to love me with your bad and your ugly. Because I'm going to transform it. Because God said, you can't love me and don't change. That's why I don't think everybody loves God. I don't think everybody loves God. At least you're not fully committed into loving God. Because if you're fully committed into loving God, you can't stay the way you are. Because when you're fully committed to loving God, you begin to change. And this is what I found out, even when you don't want to. Y'all, 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 y'all. Even when you don't want to change, when you love God, you get to change it. Yes. Got married. Y'all got married. And before I got married, I never looked at Golden Girls. <laughs> Somebody help me here. I never looked at King of the Hill. I turned Hallmark Channel off when it came on. But since I got married, think about it. Since I got married, I'm looking at King of the Hill. I'm looking at, I was looking at Golden Girls last night. Hallmark Channel. Why? Because when you love somebody, it'll change. Oh, God. It'll change you. And you can't love God, and God won't change you. It'll change you. And you don't even know you change. Until you're looking, why am I looking at this? Why? And, and it's getting good to me. Why am I getting? And I can't. Uh, what, hold up, hold up. What, what they going to do? And you don't know you change because you love somebody. God says, just love me and I'll change you. And you're trying to figure out why. Why I want to go to church. Why I don't want to go to the club no more? Why I don't want to do all that? Because when you begin to love God, he'll begin to change you. Because he wants the bad. He wants the ugly. He wants the good. Because he wants, he knows his love is contagious. And it'll change you. See, that's why people don't want to come to church. Because they know if they ever, this love ever get a hold of them. This stuff they like doing, they won't like doing no more. That's, that's, that's why they say, I, I, no, I can't go. Because they already know they're doing the bad and doing the ugly. But they already know if I stay too long in that place and God ever gets a hold of me. Because see, a lot of people already had their grandmother who used to pray for them or their mama used to pray for them or their auntie used to pray for them. So they know something about church. And they know if I ever get in there and it get a hold of me, I'm going to start doing some stuff. I like what I'm doing and I don't want to stop. So I'm going to but what I found out is when you get to loving God, you don't like the stuff you used to like. And some stuff you thought you'd never like, you start liking. Why? Because you start loving God. So God wants the good. He wants the bad. 
He wants the ugly. But can I close with point number four? And point number four is really just a scripture because I did that. The scripture jumped out to me. Go to John 4, 14 and 15. The gospel according to St. John, chapter 14 and 15. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. But this thing jumped at me. And uh, it's my last point. But I think, I thought point number three was my most powerful point. But point number four kind of jumped out at me. Do you have it, John 15 and 14? I'm sorry, John 14 and 15. I'm reversing things. John 14 and 15. Will you have it? Say amen. Look, look I'm reading from the Amplified Classic, but it, it says this. If you really, and this is Jesus talking, love me, you will keep, obey my commandments. Well, when I saw this, and you're looking at it now, I think some of us start acting like the rich, the young rich ruler. You say, well, Lord, I, I, I kept your commandments. I kept your commandments. But I got to ask you something. Have you done the last thing God told you to do? Because when we look at commandments, we only think about the word. Or what we call the logos. The written word, logos means written word. We only think about the written word. So yeah, Lord, I've, I've kept all your written commandments. But commandments are more than just the logos. That's what we call a rhema word. Rhema means coming straight from God. There's some things he tells you to do. And that's still a commandment. So Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now I'm not going to go with somebody who wants to go uh, theology with me. Well, that's Jesus talking. Well, you're right. You're right. That is Jesus talking. And there is an equation that says it's A equals B and B equals C. Then A equals C. And so uh, Jesus is A. And, Jesus, and God is B. And Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. And me and the Father are one. So that's A and that B. And then Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you love me. So if Jesus and the Father are one, when you keep Jesus' commandments, you're keeping God's commandments. So if you're keeping God's commandments, that's how you're showing God that you love him. And so the question is, what's the last commandment he gave you? Have you kept it? And, and if he had to call you to judgment right now, could you say you love him? Because the word says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But then he said, love me with all, my, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So if I still use that same equation that A equals B and B equals C, that means A equals C. That means if I'm going, that means I got to keep his commandments, check this out, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Oh, God. So that means the last thing he told me to do, I got to do it with everything that's within me. Yeah. Or I'm not showing him that I love him. Well. Oh, God. I know that wasn't a shouting point, but that was my best point. <laughs> because we don't equate the two. If he tells me to do something and I love him, that means I got to put everything behind. Because some of us, and don't raise your hand. Some of us are doing what God told us, told us to do. We're just not doing it with everything that's within us. You're not doing it with everything within you. And I propose to you, according to the scripture, that that's not showing God that you love him. Because if loving him is keep it, can I, thank you, Holy Ghost, can I use this parable? You tell your child to go clean a room or go clean their room. And you go and they say, it's clean. <laughs> Anybody been there? They, it's clean. And you go in the room. And, and stuff is still, and if you like my daughter, I ain't going to tell you which one. She said, it's cleaner than it was. But that ain't clean. And some of us do it God the same way. Lord, I'm doing more than I was. But that's not what he asked you to do. He said, love me with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. That means when he gives you a commandment, he wants you to do it with your everything. 
I'm going to hit this point. I don't know why I'm going to hit it, but I'm going to hit it, and then I'm going to hit it, and then if I need to go side, if I need to go that way, then get that door, um, I'm going to go back out that way. My car's run, it'll be running for me because I, I just want to say this. I just want to say this. The last thing God told you to do in his house, did you do it with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength? Oh, God. But I did it. <laughs> but did you do it to love God? Because God said, if you love me, it got to be with everything. It got to be with everything. I want all of your heart. I want all your soul. It's, it's like this. Let me, let me hit the ladies. It's like this. Ladies, if, if your man loves you, you want all his money. <laughs> you don't want to share his money with nobody else. You're not sharing it with another woman because you want all his. Oh, yeah, you're going to help me here. <laughs> You can't split this thing up. Well, I love you, babe. I'm going to give you this. But I love her over here, so I'm going to give her. No, if you love me, all of it comes here. God said, if you love me, all of it comes. Oh, yeah, you going to help me. It comes here. It comes here. It comes here. Oh. God said, you got to. You got to, if you're going to love me, you got to do it with everything. And how do you show that you love me? You keep my commandments. And you keep it with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's how. That's, that's, that's the love of God. I'm sitting at my computer. I'm typing this up and say, Lord, you know. And I really, and I, I said, well, let me just go. I got to hear this because this, this, I just got to hear this. Let me bring up Atlanta Star because they said, if your heart won't in it, why didn't you tell me so? And I had to pull it up because some of y'all heart ain't in it. And God said, all you had to do is tell me your heart won't in it because, see, you sing in the one part. If your heart ain't in it, why you ain't tell me so? And God saying the other part, if my heart won't in it, I would have told you. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me in here. You've been saved all your life. I know. You don't go Google it, Atlanta Star. It's too gold for some of y'all. Let's go. But God has said, I, if I didn't love you, if my heart won't in it, I would have told you. Why didn't you tell me? How are you going to be in a relationship and, and the other one don't know that you love them? And God said, I'm telling you every day I wake you up in the morning. I put food on your table. I put clothes on your back. <laughs> you didn't even say good morning to me, but I still bless you. You, you, didn't even, you didn't even tell me before you went to sleep I love you, but I still bless you. You didn't even do what I told you to do last time, but I still bless you. You act crazy on the job, but I let you keep the job. You, oh, God, y'all ain't going to help me. You, you, you blew your money on something else, but I still let the house, the lights stay on, and the heat stay on, and I still let you keep the car, and I still kept something over your head. You jacked all of it up, but I still kept a roof over your head. I'm showing you that I love you. Yeah. God, there's something I told you not to get in. I still got you out. Oh, God, I'm showing you that I love you. I'm doing my part. God is like a land star. My heart won't end. I would have told you. God's trying to figure out, do you really love me? <coughs> do you really love me? He shouldn't have to ask the question. Do you really love me? We first got on closing. When we first got married, I would sometimes send a text or send something to the first lady and say, I love you. She would send me back and I would get mad. She'd be like, why? <laughs> I wasn't good at saying why then. <laughs> I wasn't good. But just the other day, I sent her a text and she said, why? And I sent her something back. And she said, a smiley face. I got good at telling why now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get you. Can I help somebody? I'm just trying to get you to get good at telling God why you love him. I'm just trying to get good. You get good and let go, let God know that you do love him. Because just don't tell him you love him. Show him you love him. Love him with all your heart. Love him with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. And then love him 
with all your strength. Love him with everything. Love him with everything. God gave me this. He, he, he reminded me of this. When you play poker, and some of y'all may play poker, when you play poker and you're confident of your hand, you, you say, I'm going to bet it all. But when you're scared of what the other person has in their hand, you either fold or only put a little bit and see if they're going to call you. You'll call them with a little bit and they'll say, I see you and raise you. Some of y'all are scared. And that's why you ain't putting all your chips in. Because you're not confident of God's love for you. You've been hurt, so you only put in, I'm, I'm not going to put it all in because I'm, I'm not going to risk it all. That's why you can't love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength because you've been hurt. You've been burnt. You done played poker and somebody done got you out of your mind. So you're like, I'm, I'm not doing that no more. I'm playing. I'm playing. See, I can't deal with that. Let me, let me deal with something. You done played spades and got burnt. Yeah, you, you just knew you, you had, you just had, you, you had the, you had the ace of diamonds, you had the king of diamonds, you had the queen of diamonds, you had the jack of diamonds, and you thought, I'm going to just run these three books, and then you got to the queen and got cut. You thought you, bro, Junior, you thought you had four books, the ace, the king, the queen, you thought, and then you didn't know somebody ain't had no, ain't had no diamonds, you put that queen out there, just knew that was going to take it, and you got cut by three of spades. You got cut by through a spade. And so you you scared now. You scared. Well, you know, how many books you got? Uh, I only got uh, no, I only got two. A uh, one in the possible. What's a one in the possible? I only got one in the You scared. Cause the last hand that burned you, you just knew you had it and you got burned. You said, No, I'm not getting burned right now. I'm gonna play it safe. And I'm gonna play it safe. All y'all trying to play it safe with God. You trying to play it safe with God. Well, he, he might love me. I got two in a possible. He, he might come through this time. And you're trying to play it safe with God. And God said, I'm going to put it all in. Trust me enough to put it all in. I'm not the one that hurts you. I'm not the one that lets you down. I'm not the one that disappoints you. They even might have had my name, but they didn't represent me. Oh, God, that's, that's deeper than what you. They might have had my name, but they didn't represent me. No, no, I'm, I'm not the one that's going to leave you out there. Put it all in. See, because to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, you got to trust God. You got to trust God. To love, you got to trust. Can I take it a step further? To love, you got to be willing to be hurt. To love, you got to be willing to be hurt. To love, you got to set yourself up to fall. Because the love for real leaves everything open. None of us means, those who are married, means to hurt our spouse. But we'll say something to hurt them. Intentionally or unintentionally, you said something to hurt them. And you might not even know that you hurt them, but you said something. And does love close up just because you've been hurt? Does love... Stop. Judas came. He walked in the garden and he kissed Jesus. He said he loved Jesus. Jesus knew he was going to betray him, but love let him kiss him. Oh, God. Love let Judas still kiss him. Even though the kiss was the signal of who Jesus was. Because they didn't know who Jesus was. And he said, who I kiss is Jesus. Arrest him. Now I told you last week, I might have took him to Judas go kiss Peter. <laughs> I'm going to let you think Peter is me. But love said, go ahead and kiss me, Judas. Can I, can I get even deeper? With love said, put the, his neck out there and say, kiss me. Knowing... He was about to be betrayed. But love sticks his neck out. Even when it looks like it's going to get cut off.
Because love leaves itself vulnerable. But real love, this is the thing we don't teach. Real love comes back and heals. Because if it didn't heal, you'd never be able to love again. So God comes back and heals. Real love heals. You can't be scared to love God. Don't base God's credit on somebody else's bad credit. Don't base God's credit on somebody else's bad credit. He said, you're judging me because of what your mama did, your daddy did, your wife did, your kids did, your boss did. You're judging me according to them. Don't judge me according to them. Judge me according to me. Have I ever let you down? Have I ever disappointed you? Have I ever left you? Have I ever forsaken you? Judge me for me. Don't judge me on on somebody else. Because I said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And James Moore let me know even when I didn't think he was there. He was there all the time. Let's love God with everything we got. Come on, rest to your feet and give God a praise. I want you real quick, because we still got some other stuff to do, but I want you real check, real quick. I want you to check your love gauge. What you mean, Pastor? Your love gauge is like your gas gauge on your car. When that gets low, you know you need to fill it back up or you're running out. Some of our love gauge is low. It's low because of what we've been through. It's low because we took some hits. And God said, today, I want to fill your gauge back up. It's like somebody saying, hey, I know you, you're running low on gas. I know you don't got no money. Pull to the gas station. I'm going to fill it up for you. No charge. That's what God is saying tonight, today. I want to fill you back up with my love. I want to fill you back up my because your love gauge is low. And I know it's low. But I'm going to fill it back up. And I'm not going to charge you a dime for it. So with every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want you to be honest. I want to touch and agree with you. If your love gauge is low and you want God to fill it back up. I just want you to raise your hand. Just be honest in the building. Thank you. Would you keep those hands lifted for just a moment? I want to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see these hands that are lifted across this sanctuary. And I may not know the individual situation that has caused the love gauge to go low but you do you've seen every situation you've seen every tear and I ask you now in the name of Jesus through the process of the rest of this month because their gauge didn't get low all of a sudden it took some time but over the process of this month this February being the love month Fill their gauge back up, dear Father. Some of them still may have to cry. Some of them still may have to deal with some situation. Some of them still may have to deal with some past and come to a realization of some things. But throughout the rest of this month, Lord, fill their gauge. And I rebuke everything that's going to try to take anything from what they have now. Till the end of the month in Jesus name they still may say it but it's not going to affect them it still may happen but it's not going to affect them I plead the blood over each one of them now in the name of Jesus to protect where their gauge is now and Lord by the end of February February the 28th let their love level be full someone wanted full like it used to be Fill it again. Fill it again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen. Give God a praise right there. (laughs) 
But I want us to do one other thing. I still want you to do one other thing. I still want to have you. I still want you. Right now, there might be somebody you need to forgive. I want you to get that person in the forefront of your mind right now. Might be a past hurt, might be a recent hurt. I don't, I don't care what it is. But the gauge can't be fulfilled if you don't forgive. And so if there's, one, if there's more than one, I want you to get that person in your mind right now. And we're going to make an open confession to forgive and then God is going to do the rest. So you got to decide to forgive in order for God to help you to forgive. If you never say yes to forgiveness, he can't help you to forgive. So I want you to get that person's mind, get that person in the forefront of your mind, or more, maybe it's more than one person. Get them to the forefront of your mind right now. And with me, we're going to make this statement, Lord, I forgive them. So get them, get them to your mind, whoever it is or whoever they are. Get them on your mind now. Picture them in your mind. And together we're going to say this. And then I'm going to pray and God's going to do it. Already you got them on your mind now. I don't care who it is. Get them on your mind right now. And we're going to say this together. You ready? Lord, I forgive them. Father, give them strength. You don't have to repeat that. I mean, Father, give them strength to forgive now. They made the decision to give, but they haven't felt the emotion yet. But since they made the decision, help them to do it. Give them the strength to do it. Remove all the animosity. Heal all the hurt. Do it now. In Jesus' name, amen. And what I want you to do because you got to be practical. Every time the enemy tries to bring it back to your mind of what you experience, you just tell the devil, I have already forgiven them. That keeps it from trying to build back up. You let the devil know, this is, I've already forgiven them. Come on, give God a praise right there.